Hi there, it's Tara Bianca with Be Light Transformative Therapy, and today I want to talk more about exhaling. Just a few weeks ago, I made a video about how to exhale during physical exercise. You can check that video out right up here. But today, I want to discuss why in the oxygen advantage do we practice all of our breath holds after a normal exhale? What's the deal with that? Let's get into it. Firstly, what is a normal exhale? Usually, when we say normal, we mean passive, quiet, easy, without any added muscular contraction. So a normal exhale is not about squeezing your abs in order to wring out all the air. A normal exhale happens all day, every day, without you even being consciously aware of it. And it will definitely be unique to you. So your normal exhale is going to be slightly different than my normal exhale. The fancier way to describe a normal exhale is to tell someone to exhale to functional residual capacity. Functional residual capacity is the volume of air remaining in your lungs after the end of a passive exhalation. Just as an aside, in case you thought that your lungs were emptied of air at the end of your exhalation, even a maximal, effortful exhalation, it's just not true. There always needs to be some residual volume of air remaining in the lungs, as without it, your chest would collapse and the inward negative pressure would make it almost impossible to inhale. But back to functional residual capacity. I've seen it described as the perfect balance point between the inward force of the recoiling lungs and the outward force of the expanding ribs. This idea might really help you to visualize and also feel where that natural endpoint of your passive normal exhale is. This is a good concept to understand because even though this is happening unconsciously all day, as soon as I ask you to focus on your breathing or to focus on your exhale, what's going to happen? You're going to start manipulating your breathing. And not just you, everyone. As soon as we're asked to focus on our breathing, we change our breathing. It's unavoidable. That conscious attention changes everything. So I want you to just get comfortable with the feeling of a normal exhale. Let's try it a few times together right now. So go ahead and with your mouth closed, take a normal breath in through your nose, and then take a normal breath out through your nose. And take a normal breath in through your nose. And take a normal breath out through your nose. How do you do? Were you able to keep your breath totally quiet? Were you able to exhale without tightening your abs or manipulating your respiratory muscles? Were you able to just let your breath go and really feel that balance point? that equilibrium that I talked about before between the recoiling lungs and the expanding ribs. A normal exhale should feel like the most complete exhale that you can achieve before you need to use some level of muscular contraction to exhale further. So you're getting the point, right? You're starting to feel that natural end point of your exhale. So now, what if I ask you to take a normal inhale? What does that look like? Where do you even stop inhaling? Maybe that question even popped into your head during the demo we did just a moment ago. And I hear you. I can inhale to here. Or I can inhale to here. Or I can inhale to here. Your respiratory system is set up in such a way where you have to activate your respiratory muscles in order to inhale. There's no such thing as a passive inhale, right? but there is such a thing as a passive exhale. Exhaling does not require muscular contraction. And because of that, we can somewhat standardize what a normal exhale is for us. So let's go back to the original question. 
Why in the oxygen advantage do we practice all of our breath holds after a normal exhale? And this is reason number one, consistency. A normal exhale creates a consistent baseline from which we can measure all of our breath holds. Once you understand your normal exhale, almost 10 times out of 10, you are always going to stop your exhale naturally at almost the exact same spot in order to start your breath hold. But with a normal inhale, there's less consistency. You might stop your inhale at a different spot every time, so it doesn't provide a reliable baseline from which to measure your breath holds. Caveat being, unless you're training maximum inhales, which is a different technique for a different time. The second reason that we practice our breath holds after a normal exhale is to accelerate the hypoxic hypercapnic effect. After a normal exhale, there is less oxygen in the lungs than there would be after a normal inhale, and so that oxygen can very quickly diffuse into the bloodstream. When we hold our breath after a normal exhale, our CO2 levels also start to rise pretty quickly. You can check out the more in-depth video I did on this topic over here. And due to the Bohr effect, these elevated levels of CO2 trigger the oxygen to more easily and more readily leave the red blood cells in order to enter the tissues and the organs. This is what I mean by the hypoxic hypercapnic effect. It's a temporary environment of relatively low oxygen, hypoxia, and high CO2, hypercapnia. What are the benefits of inducing a hypoxic hypercapnic state? Well, some of the big ones are increased CO2 tolerance, delayed onset of fatigue, improved aerobic capacity, stronger respiratory muscles, lighter, more efficient breathing at rest and during physical exercise, more open airways, greater mental clarity, and greater resilience physically, emotionally, and mentally. Part of my channel is to take seemingly inconsequential questions and really untangle them in fine detail. For me personally, this really helps me to understand complex topics like breathing more deeply, and I feel that it makes me a better teacher as well. So I hope that you too enjoy these videos and get a lot of value out of them. In the comments below, let me know if you have a regular breath hold practice and if you typically practice your breath holds after an exhale or after an inhale. Also, if this oxygen advantage stuff sounds interesting to you, I regularly run a live online four week breath boot camp. Even if you've missed the most recent registration, I always keep a waitlist up on my website so that you're sure to find out about the next training. If you'd like to find out more about it, you can follow the link that's on your screen right now, or you can also find the link in the video description. That's all for today. I look forward to seeing you next time. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. You can also go ahead and click that bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video. And if you're interested in a totally free breath training, please sign up for my Breath Basics six day challenge. You can find the link for that on the end screen as well as in the video description. And lastly, if you are ever in a position to become a sponsor of my channel and directly support the growth of Be Light, please visit my Buy Me a Coffee page where you can make a one-time or monthly donation. You can find that link as well in the video description. And as always, I want to say an enormous thank you to all of my current sponsors. Your support means the world to me. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you soon.